Hey, welcome back. I'd like to start off this video by apologizing for the rushed and scripted nature of some of my previous videos. I was dealing with some trial software that only gave me five minutes to work with. Now, fortunately, I've got some different software that hopefully is going to work out for me and will allow me to just speak in a normal voice and not deal with a script, although I probably should have written some notes since I'm pretty distractible. Today I'd like to go into the origins of that 666 equation, where it came from, how I was introduced to it. It's a pretty incredible story, but I assure you that I'll, I'll never do anything but tell you the truth. And if there's something that I feel that I can't share with you, then I just won't share it until it's time, if it's ever time. I was going to go way back and explain all of the events that led up to my coming to the place I was at. Instead, I just want to give you some quick background. I want you to know that I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always open-minded. I wasn't always into these things. I was... I was a programmer, software engineer for many years. I've been playing with computers since I was about 10. And logic's always been my life. And everything needed a logical explanation. Or I really wasn't interested in hearing about it. And my whole adventure into the realm of esoteria and these sort of what some people call superstitious nonsense started with a, my buying a box of psychology books at an auction back in 1999 for a dollar. The price was pretty hard to beat, and, and so I didn't pass on it. And at the bottom of that box of psychology books, I found a book called The Zodiac and Its Mysteries by Professor A.F. Seward. It was in pristine condition, and uh, I assumed that it was from the 70s, but it turned out that it was from about 1915. And when I opened it up for some giggles, because like I said, at the time I was very plugged in, it blew my mind. It was as though somebody had cracked open my skull and uh, was reading my innermost motivations and thoughts. And these weren't general vague terms. Like I said, uh, logic is very important to me, and I'd always been very skeptical of that sort of thing. And so these were very dead-on, very specific things. I then opened it up to my then-wife, now ex-wife's page, and, and it was just amazing. We'd been married for 10 years, and I knew her very well, and it was just astounding. That didn't convince me. You know, like I said, hardcore skeptic. I went on a a little interview thing where I just I tried to keep an open mind. I fully expected to debunk this as being just kind of general vagaries or little psychological flim flam mind tricks. And instead, what I found was that after weeding out many of the questions, I came down to a core set of questions that were were very accurate most of the time. And I also found that they helped me to understand my wife better. She was very emotional in nature, and I was very much the opposite. So thus began my uh, dive into the realm of intuition and understanding my inner motivations and my inner feelings on things, which I had isolated myself from many, many years before as a child. Well, around... Sometime after that, uh, probably spring of 2000, we were both having very strong feelings that we needed to move, and in particular, we wanted to move to California. But you know, I had a house, so I was making about fifty thousand a year, which you know, for a high school dropout, <laughs> is not the easiest thing in the world to do, and so. I held on to what I had, the material things that I had, uh, until June of 2000 rolled around, and I realized that that I wasn't going to be able to stay when it started raining and raining and raining and raining, and it didn't stop raining for about two weeks, at which time my house was full of about 
two to three feet of water. You know, my house was pretty much gone, and I had spent uh, a lot of time doing this, that, and the other until to the point where my employer couldn't hold on to me any longer, and I had to move on. <laughs> Pink slip pretty much uh, decided that for me. I um. I didn't mention, but uh, I had been feeling something about water, but it, it wasn't that flood. I'll get into that later on. Anyhow, I uh, I got a quick job in Chicago, and the first day I went there, I, as I got closer to Chicago, those feelings about water grew. I mean, the feeling, just this impending sense of doom. Uh, even though I knew I could do it, I was capable of doing the job. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with where I was going, and I could just feel it. And like I said, I was only recently familiarized with my intuitive, my intuitive side. So I kind of ignored it. I got there, and I had a major, major panic attack. I called my my uh, employer and told him I, I, I wasn't going to be able to do that job. I... Uh, then drove about 200 miles south, uh, lived in an RV, th the RV with my family for about a month before another job came through. And again, you know, I started making really good money, close to six digits. I, I was drinking imported beer and eating, you know, 20 pounds of sirloin every paycheck. And life was good until my weight ballooned. But <laughs> that's another story. And the whole time, that anxious feeling was sort of a silent little voice inside of me, and it was telling me the same thing. It was telling me I needed to leave there, and, and specifically it was calling me to California. So sometime in mid-2001, I had almost made up my mind, but I was so attached to the things, I was so attached to the success that I didn't listen and I felt that something was coming something something big it was shortly after that that as you all remember the events of September 11th came down and just knocked me to my knees literally I fell to my knees when I saw the buildings fall I I, I know this will sound strange but I, I felt a wave I felt a literally a wave of energy coming from the east and it just plowed through me like a Mack truck, and I screamed, you know, uh, I'd like to think it wasn't a real, you know, girly scream or anything, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, I, uh, I knew then that I had to listen to this voice, it was sometime after that, November of 2001, that uh, the layoffs started happening, and I decided that rather than wait to be laid off, I, w I needed to leave, so I told my employer that I had some things to take care of and that I was going to be leaving. And we packed our things up, sold what we couldn't fit in the car, and we drove to California, kind of like the Beverly Hillbillies, I guess. <laughs> and we had very, very, very little. Um, not until the following April were we able, or February or whatever it was, were we able to get any, any funds. So those first two or three months were really, really hard. But but something was happening to me, and I was changing, and and I didn't understand it because it was so foreign to my 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 logic nature, my previous way of of being, which was to scrutinize everything with a skeptical mind and disregard notions that I'd been told were absurd. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this on the next video, so I'll see you there.